booktube it's Catherine and welcome to a lovely sunny morning in Scarborough and uh, give me a chance to film in the back garden again and the sun it keeps coming in and out it's a bit beating quite hot on my back so I might have to move shortly um, so what I've got for you now is I've got a book haul from our local uh, second-hand bookshop I unhauled a load of books that i had been uh, saving so I could take quite a few back and um, got some credits for that for those for that for those that I took back and uh, these are the ones that I got in their place so um, I think that's great you don't feel too guilty then do you really you know if you take a load in and uh, you don't spend any more usually though I end up buying more than I get the credits for so I am spending money but I was very good and um, you know I just swap like for liking excuse me for each like for liking credits so yeah it, it feels even more exciting when you've done that because you think oh I've not spent any money so without further ado this is the selection that I've got and see if there's some that can go on your TBRs that are going to tempt you so the first one is The Fatal Touch this is by Connor Fitzgerald now they seem to have a lot of these large paperbacks in some ways they get on my nerves a little bit um, because it's sort of I struggle to get them in my bookshelves you know you do get them that are this size and uh, uh, I don't like the really little mass market paperback ones now that are really small that, that, that really you can't get them in your shelves easily either but these are a bit hard to they're like hardbacks they're hard to hold sometimes when you're reading um, and this is an Alec Bloom novel I've not heard of Connor Fitzgerald before and um, this is really um, a mystery and um, let's have a look what we've got here it's just a hugely compelling dark thriller so I don't know too much about that the blurb doesn't give much away um, so we'll see see what that brings I'm having to put them down there though. Don't know where to put my books. Been in the garden. I'm on the wrong side of the table. Well, swings and roundabouts because I can pick them up, but <laughs> I'll have to go like that and throw them off camera to be caught by my helpful assistant Nelson. An e to shreve testimony. Now I've got quite a few an e to shreve in uh, in my library, and this. Um, this sounds another exciting one. It's um, New England boarding school. A sex scandal breaks out. Ooh. Even more shopping than shopping, shocking than the sexual acts themselves is the fact that they were caught on camera. Ooh, a Pandora's box of revelations. Um, so I like Anita Shreve. So we'll see what this one brings. Um, I think I'm going to do. Uh, uh, a month where I read nothing but her books shortly. I think, yeah, that'd be a good idea. I've got quite a few I've not read now, so that'd be interesting. The next one, Sultan's Seal. Now, this is by Jenny White. I've not heard of Jenny White before. Nice embossed, embossed cover there with some um, Sultan's Palace background. Um, feel to that this is a, a murder mystery it's historical fiction and it's set against the backdrop of um, the political upheaval in the Ottoman Empire I believe so I think that should be uh, quite quite an interesting read this is a gripping tale of murder in 19th century Istanbul I know. Put it across there. Put it across there. next Isabel and Rocco Anna Stothard. Now, uh, not heard of this author. I think the main the authors I've not heard of, apart from uh, one or two. So um, this is when uh, a couple of teenagers are abandoned, and um, didn't know much about it. Doesn't say too much on the on the back. When I've looked it up on Goodreads, there may be a little bit of incest going on in there. So I don't know how palatable that's going to be. Uh, whether it's tastefully done and it's it's obviously it is a, a social issue that does exist and we need to be educated on it um, I just hope that it's done tastefully and uh, you know we'll see next the Grand by the Grand Canal 
William Riviere. Now, um, this is just set after the end of the World War I. Uh, it's set in Venice, which I mean, you can easily guess by the look on the cover. We've got this atmosphere, very atmospheric Venice there with the gondolas. Um, and apparently it's a slow paced look at friendship. It's had quite disappointing reviews on Goodreads. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just have to go with what your gut's telling you. It is, I don't mind a slow burner if it's beautifully written, if there are beautiful characters in. And if it's a good, um, good story showing uh, lovely friendships and all, all that brings, then, yeah, it might not be fast paced and um, like psychological thrillers seem to be the thing at the minute very fast faced very gritty very du -du -du. and sometimes you know these slow burning just lovely stories get left behind so we'll see what i make of that i'm just gonna have a slurp of my tea if you don't mind just have my toast now i'm gonna have a slurp english breakfast right look at this one swan river this is by David Reynolds and actually this is a family memoir um, and it's a memoir looking back at David Reynolds' grandfather's time I believe. Um, it's set mainly in Victorian London and it goes up to the 1960s when uh, David Reynolds came of age and I think this is what this is, we've got the 60s, we've got like going back to the war, the Victorian times, we've got a bit on here to do with the 60s, it's very much you know the age of uh, sex and rock and roll and brightly coloured dresses you know uh, we started to <coughs> butch the skirts up a few inches um, I'm going to save this I think for uh, my non-fiction November I'm starting to put together a few uh, ready for that I know it's a long way off um, but you know I like to uh, read a good memoir as part of my collection for non-fiction November so yeah that'd be nice to keep for that Next one, Sacred Hearts. And this is by Sarah Dunant. Um, again, not um, not come across this author before. Let's have a look what we've got here. Mainly, uh, from what I can gather, looking up about this author, she uh, she's quite well respected for the authenticity of her her historical. Uh, facts that she puts into her, her, her fiction novels and um, you know this seems to be another good example of that um, it's set in 1570 in Italy uh, in the city of Fer Ferrara and um, yeah this sounds really interesting I'm not going to say too much about this because it's it's sort of I think it's probably historical family drama um, but yeah we'll see what, what unfolds with that that looks interesting too the thing with this bookshop it's called Mrs Lofthouse and you'll see that I have done some filming in there and oh it just gets it just gets where you don't know where to start in some respects there's far too many books it's fantastic but it's a small shop and you've got to rummage through to get you know to get the uh, to get the little pearls so next Little Girl Gone, Alexandra Burt. Now, uh, Alexandra Burt is a German author. Uh, she now uh, lives in the States and she's very much involved in a movement over there which represents and um, develops female crime writers, I believe. Yes. So um, she works with a um, group of people to uh, really try and promote uh, young female authors well but not necessarily young but crime writers and uh, yeah I think that's a, a good worthy cause and uh, this sounds really exciting nothing thrilling about the front really I don't think um, but the blurb sounded interesting a baby goes missing but does her mother want her back when Estelle's baby daughter is taken from her cot, she doesn't report her missing. Days later, Estelle is found in a wrecked car with a wound to the head and no memory. Estelle knows she holds the key to what happened that night. 
but what she doesn't know is whether she was responsible. Now it says Gone Girl meets Girl on the Train in this stunning psychological thriller. Well, that in a way I hate it when they put that because I, I just think that their books in their own right, yes, they're very hyped, they're very well known now, um, but I always think that it's putting pressure on people when they, you know, they link them in with those titles. It's as if then it's it sets people up to be disappointed and, and you know, all books should be looked at in their own right, not, not always compared to the height, the height, um, what shall we say, the thing of the moment, the books of the moment, the books on trend, shall we say, so we'll see what that, that's like. Now, this looks brand new, it's really in lovely condition. Uh, it's The Crow Road by Ian Brank Branks, Banks even, Ian. Now this is the Scottish, the Scottish spelling of Ian, Ian, but it's still Ian. Um, yes, well-known, renowned author. I've not read any of his either. I'm trying to see what, what year this was. I mean, he's, he's written many, 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 many books. I'm surprised I haven't read any. Now, one of the most famous is The Wasp Factory. Um, I've not read any of those so uh, it'd be interesting to see how I found his writing style and uh, if I really like this then I need to get cracking and look at some others. Um, the blurb is a bit confusing, it doesn't really give you uh, too much of a, an idea what's going on so we'll just go into this blind really. Um, yeah, something to do with the Scottish family, something to do with the death of his grandmother. Um, and there may be a musical theme in there somewhere. But apart from that, the blurb has confused me, but I was intrigued. Um, see what that brings. Right, sorry, another slurp before it goes cold. Nelson's waiting down here ready because he, he, if he has a drop of tea left, he's in there. Right, next. Anne of Green Gables. Now, L. M. Montgomery very famous children's classic. Um, next month July is, um, I'm reading along with most of the children's classics that uh, um, Ease Victoria is, is hosting and for July it's uh, Anne of Green Gables. Now I have got a copy of Anne of Green Gables in a really special um, lovely edition but Ah, oh, I couldn't resist this. It doesn't look as if it's been used and it's got a pretty cover. This is the Oxford Children's Classics. And I thought this is such a pretty cover. How, how much was it? £2.50. So I thought, yeah, I'll have that. And then finally, the last two, we've got two Catherine Webbs. Now I do like Catherine Webb as an author. Uh, I like her writing style. These are two that I've not read and was pleased to find them. So this one is The Unseen and this is in England 1911 and um, it's a murder mystery and a free spirited young woman arrives in a sleepy Berkshire village to work as a maid in the household of the Reverend and Mrs Canning. She sets in motion a chain of events which changes all their lives. Mm. Occult happenings, romantic passion and murder disrupt the peace of the Berkshire village. Ooh, uh, mysterious cover on the front. So looking forward to that one. And then another one of hers that I've not read is the Miss, Miss, McGott Miss McGotten. The sun get into me. The Miss Begotten. Another lovely cover there. They would seem to have lovely sort of atmospheric covers most of her books at the moment. So this is set in Bath, 1821. Uh, Rachel Crofton escapes her unhappy employment as a governess by marrying a self-made businessman, but her new life soon takes an unexpected turn. Mm. See, they're not always what they seem, these uh, rich self-made businessmen, are they back in the day? Uh, he's tormented by the loss of his childhood sweetheart, Alice, and um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Obviously, he's not forgotten her, and um, it'll be interesting to see what that uncovers. So, there we go. 
I'm really excited about those, um, especially that they were just a, a sweet, straight sweet. And I've had my toast, a straight swap for um, all the books I took unhauling. So hope you enjoy those. Put in the comments down below if you've read any of them. See you again next time, booktube. Bye for now.